We'll now talk about Bayes' theorem. And first, we'll state the theorem. Given a probability distribution on x and a conditional probability from x to y, call it f, so a stochastic map, there exists another map going in the opposite direction, let's call it G, such that the diagram, now the diagram looks a little bit complicated, but it's not too bad. When we write out the equation, we'll see exactly what it means. So here we'll have P, and here notice we can compose P with F to get another probability distribution on y, and we'll call that q. So we have our probability distribution on x on 1 on y. We duplicate x. We duplicate y. This almost reminds me of the definition of AE equivalence. x cross y. And here, we will apply the only maps we can. And to go from x to y, we apply f. And to go from y to x, we apply g. So the statement is that this diagram commutes. And furthermore, for any other stochastic map that also goes in the opposite direction, let's call it g prime, satisfying this. then these two maps are, are almost everywhere equivalent and in the sense of our probability Q. So this is the formal statement of Bayes' theorem. And if you've, seen, if you've seen Bayes' theorem in a different context, this may seem totally strange. But let's just see exactly what it says. when we look at the composition of all of these arrows. We've actually computed expressions just like this. If you remember the, this left-hand side when we were doing the notion of almost everywhere equivalence in that diagrammatic perspective, we computed something, I think it may have been exactly this expression actually. So commutativity says, says that f y x times p x equals, and if we did that same calculation but on the right hand side of this diagram it looks almost the same, it's just that the g is on the other side, nevertheless we still get g x y q y. And this holds for all x y. Of course x is in x and y is in y. Now let's introduce some notation to see how to understand this. Let's define P of Y given X. So this is the probability of Y given X to be exactly FYX. That's exactly what F means. F is a stochastic map. It says it's not corresponding to a function. It says if you give me X, I will give you Y with some probability. The probability is exactly FYX. So that's exactly what this conditional probability is. And the probability of x is just little px. The conditional probability of x given y, now this is going in the opposite direction. It says, if you give me y, what's the probability of x occurring? That's exactly gxy. And finally, the probability of y occurring is qy. And so if we write down these expressions, commutativity is of this diagram says nothing but the probability of x given y times the probability of x is equal to the probability of, y, of x given y times the probability of y, which is perhaps a slightly more familiar form of Bayes' theorem, at least when your events are singleton sets. And with the appropriate definitions, you can also extend this 
are, you can look at what this diagram means because these are corresponding to probability measures. And you can also define um, a notion of conditional probability where you replace this point with a subset. And you can use the probabilities on your corresponding spaces to make sense of what this means when x is replaced by some event a, perhaps, and y is replaced by some event b. Nevertheless, the same equation still follows from the commutativity of this diagram. So let's look at our earlier example just to see what this is saying and how to interpret it in sort of a real life situation. So if you remember, we had x and y, two sets with each of which contains two elements. And x corresponded to the set where there's a good sale and the other element was not a great sale, not good sale. And y is the set of elements, the set containing the elements. I go to the store, the grocery, um, the grocery store, or I don't go. And we also had probabilities on each of these spaces. And we also knew the probabilities that if there's a good sale, how likely am I to go? Right, that was nine, nine, 90%. So 90% if good, I go with 90% probability. And if not good, then I still go, but with 60% chance. And likewise, the other probabilities are given by the fact that it's one minus this, one minus this. And we also know the probability of there actually being a good sale. So we know what P of good sale is, and the probability is 30%, and the probability of a not good sale is, therefore, 70%. So we have all of this information. Now, imagine you're in that store this particular week, and you happen to see me there. So in that case, you happen to know I'm already at the store. Then you can ask, what is the probability that there is a good sale this week, given the information that you see and knowing this information as well? So initially, you also know the statistics that says, the, if I look over the entire year, the probability that there's a good sale is 30%. But you also know that I'm more likely to go to the store if there is a sale. So if you see me, then there might be a better chance that there's a sale this week. And how do you figure that out? Well, if we look at this expression and we compare these two sides, then we can say that f corresponds to the if there's a good sale versus if there's not a good sale, how likely am I to go or not as fyx. And the probability that there's a good sale is px. And if we wanted to know, so let's say g is on the other side, so g of x given y. So this says, if you see me at the store, so here this element y is I'm at the store. And x is there's a good sale. So if you see me at the store, what's the probability of there being a good sale? And we divide that by qy, which we've already determined last time. So qy was the probability that I went to the store. And we know that that equals the sum of the product of the probability of if there's a good sale, I go. And if there's not a good sale, I go. Um, multiply by the corresponding probabilities corresponding to here. And we found that to be 69%. So in this case, this equals 90%, 30% divided by 69%. And when you write out what this equals, it's roughly approximately equal to 39%. So you've updated your hypothesis based on what you see. And this is known as Bayesian inference or inversion. Inversion. And in fact, the map G constructed here, a G from Bayes' theorem, is called a Bayesian 
inverse of f. And it would be a little bit inappropriate to say that it only depends on f because it also depends on your prior probability distribution p. So this is an interesting reformulation of Bayes' theorem that seems to be totally in the language of category theory. And it therefore makes it amenable to a wide range of um, techniques that could be used to analyze and understand it, and perhaps even generalize this idea to other contexts. 